Welcome to Huck Outside. This week's gear review is of the Scott Avalanche Backpack Patrol E1 40 liter. I'm going to now demonstrate the armed release of the Avalanche Backpack. And there you have it, fully deployed. Okay, so let's dive into the internal compartment of the Scott backpack. So the main component here is the electric fan. You open it up, uh, you can find the on off switch or the deflation switch, uh, as well as a compartment here for uh, batteries. Go through each one in a bit. Uh, over here on the side is the USB, micro USB charging. Um, and again, you can see on the side of the unit, the three uh, LEDs to give you the status of the unit, which can also be seen from the outside of the bag to make sure that you do that while you're out there. So uh, on off, it's a uh, safety system. You can't twist without pulling turning and releasing automatically so it goes into the off position when it starts up you'll hear the fan it'll do an auto test and in this case it won't run the fan because my battery is low and I need to charge so that's what it's highlighting there uh, typically when you turn it on the first time it gives a quick spin of the fan it'll cycle through each of the LEDs here to show an auto test uh, if it passes the auto test it'll spin the set fan one more time uh, and go to a green LED. Green meaning you have up to six hours worth of uh, battery life for a full deployment. Orange meaning uh, less than six hours and likely only one deployment. Battery compartment, again two double A's. Um, those allow to keep the capacitors topped up when charged uh, and also if you have a deployment uh, those can then re um, recharge the capacitors once while you're in the backcountry if they've been fully charged. Uh, the deflation button again, safety component, so it's a push and twist. It allows you to deflate the bag, automatic release, puts it back into a moment that um, is safe. So we'll put it back into the off. Okay, next up is to test the capacity of the Scott 40 liter backpack. So now having seen the internal compartment, let's look at the outer bag compartment, which is meant for the safety gear. So in this case, we have room and capacity for shovel, uh, actually room here for my skins and my skin bag, um, probe and shovel handle, two little compartments for those. There's little sleeves in here for them to keep them like that. There's an extra room if really needed, uh, but it keeps them separated. <laughs> Other features on the outside of the pack, uh, ice axe loops here to put down and into the base. Um, you've got your main um, uh, ski carry, which is a nice ingenious little option here. You pull this out, slide skis in, tighten it up, uh, and then you've got a buckle system at the top for that. Uh, again, um, always use this for ski carrying when in avalanche terrain. Uh, this will allow airbag deployment still to happen. You can use the side buckles here and here to create the A-frame, uh, however that's not um, recommended during um, avalanche train is it's not, the deployment of the bag won't work that well. Uh, what else do we have feature-wise? Um, a little uh, pocket on the side here for carrying your handy little snacks, Swedish berries is my uh, pleasure when out there. Uh, you've got a carabiner loop on the side here um, as well. This little pocket is a stowaway 
uh, for the underleg loop to then connect around onto the belt buckle um, to make sure the backpack does not come off you when inflated or when in avalanche. So now for deflation with the bag open, opening up the compartment for the main unit. The button at the top here auto locks down. Uh, so you push, twist, and you can deflate the bag. As soon as you release, it automatically switches back to a position so that the uh, air is not in the, it can't deflate. Next up is folding and restoring the airbag. As you can see, these instructions provided in the, the manual would have been a recommendation, a nice uh, option to put it right here on the, imprinted on the, the backpack cover inside the airbag compartment. Uh, but that maybe is the Model 2. So let's show the folding. Good to practice this uh, often. So fold up, fold right across, right up to the bag line. Keep folding it back and back down. That's the one side. On the other side, fold all the way across. So it's again in line with the bag. Flip this up. At this point, we're good to flip it all the way forward. Fold it in half back. And now it's ready for uh, the squeeze in and uh, zipper around. So this has been my review of the Scott E1 Patrol 40 liter bag uh, avalanche backpack. Um, kind of closing notes on it for me. Uh, I looked at various different backpack options, went to various uh, outfitters to, uh, and took my gear with me, tried the bag out. Highly recommend that. Make sure your gear can fit. Um, I ended up buying the 30 liter version of this bag initially uh, and it just didn't, it was too tight. It, uh, it wouldn't be good for a full big day out uh, for, for my gear setup. Uh, so I went with the 40 liter option. Um, the, the, the unit, the capacitor unit, the fan unit takes up a, a decent portion inside. Uh, I looked at the other brands, um, ended up deciding to go with and spending a little bit more to get the electric capacitor version, uh, mainly so that I can test the unit, right? Each start of the season, I can, I can experience what it is like to uh, have the, the bag open up and how much I have to pull strength wise. Uh, how to repack it and does the packing work, uh, being more comfortable with it. Uh, the canister system is good, uh, though you have to refill those canisters or, or buy additional ones, uh, which to me, the, the cost of testing and practicing ends up being roughly the same as one of these uh, capacitor versions. Uh, highly recommend trying them out. Uh, I think it's a good extra uh, safety measure to have with us in the backcountry. Uh, yeah. Feel free to leave any comments, questions, enjoy the videos, and hope to see you out in the Pacific Northwest. Have a good one.